what's going on guys so as you saw on the thumbnail we're doing a review of all my fishing tackle this is probably gonna be a really long video i've got all the tackle boxes and then a bunch of different fishing rods behind me so let's get started oops well first we're gonna start off with just a bunch of random stuff i have just laying around so first we got this it's like a saltwater bait i use it whenever i go um fishing in florida like just fishing off the um what do you call it just fishing off the beach that works for a lot of different fish like it's like white fish saltwater catfish um i only know the names of fish in saltwater that's not really my thing because i live in texas so well actually there's a beach on texas i take that back i live in plano texas so don't really have an ocean around me but then i got more just a bunch of different packets of those and i have this just random little thing of jigs i got it for um christmas in my stocking i've just never opened it so i just left it in this package and then i have another little bag filled with jigs and then another little bag and that's pretty much it for all just the random stuff i had well actually i do have these crappie bites i use that for pond fishing sometimes up next is my line i don't really have much line i need to restock on it i have some 50 pound braid line it's for i use that for catfishing and then just a large spool of i think it's 15 pound line i'd kind of rip this thing apart 12 pound line right here then another thing why does that keep falling? I need to get something back. Oh, okay, I'm just going to put a ruler right there. That's not a ruler, that's a measuring tape. English is tough. Another spool of 12 pound line. It's just useful to have random spools of like thinner line. Um, I got more braid. This is 30 pound braid. I sometimes use this for bass. It's kind of heavy for bass, but all my other like good bass line that I use is out. I just restring a bunch of my rods. Now we're gonna go over like the gadget things I have. I don't really know what to call them. But first, I got this multi tool. It's like foldable. It has pliers. It has. How do I get these out? Oh, there. Kind of difficult to get them out, but I'll just tell you. They have a uh, Phillips head screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, like a file looking thing, a knife. A saw blade. Um, I don't really know what the other things are. I know there's a bottle opener, and that's all I know what the other stuff is for. But yeah, I got that. And then this thing is for like when a fish swallows a thing. You, a, why did I say the thing? Whenever a fish swallows the hook, you just stick this down their throat, and this like grabs onto the hook, and you just push in, and it'll get it out. It's supposed, supposedly, supposed, English is tough. It's supposedly supposed to work. I've never really tested it out. I haven't gotten a hook stuck in a fish since I got this. That's kind of new. And then I have this rod holder thing. It's like collapsible. It's quite long. Hi, Fifi. There's my dog. She wanted to come say hi. Okay, go over there. You're going to eat the freaking bait. It's a terrible idea to have you around bait, but... So, I have this rod holder. How do I... I can fold that down later. Um, next, I got more pliers. I use this for saltwater fishing. I bought this in Destin, Florida. And then I have a measuring tape. What I used to hold up the camera earlier. No, I'm just using this roll of electrical tape. But, next, I'm gonna go over the soft plastic... Also, I found another random thing. I just have this tiny thing with tiny hooks. Number 14 hooks. Those are like that big. Microscopic. You can probably catch like a minnow on those. Now we got the soft plastics. I got this giant tub. Um, this might take a while and I might make a mess. I got this in my mystery tackle box this, year, this month. Um, they're plasma tails. Biosent. Fancy. Um, these little trailers, I use these for like spinner baits and stuff like that. 
And then these little crawfish imitating things, I think. More trailers. More trailers. They're called three little otters. I, I don't... There's not three. Maybe that's like the size of them. There's four, so if that's the number of them, that's probably wrong. Um, then I got these. Just more um, trailers. Another thing of tra trailers. Some Sankos. More. Um, actually, these are creature baits right here. Um, more trailers. More trailers. Some swim bait. More swim baits. More Sankos, more swim baits. A lot of these are from my mystery tackle boxes. Trailer, trailer, Sankos, trailer, trailer, wait. I think these are creature baits. Swim baits. Trailers, I have so many trailers. Sankos. Ned rigs. My dog is stalking my fish. Fifi, what are those? What the heck? I don't know. I don't know. I think there's something wrong with her. Back to soft plastics. More trailers. More trailers. She's eating the tank. She's licking the tank. That's a weird dog. Um, Ned Rig. Well, I guess they're not Ned Rig. Ned Worms. Um, now she's eating fish food. If you know. More trailers. Swim bait. Trailers. Trailers. Bunch of small little jigs and stuff like that. More little jigs. These are like fancy, uh, these are fancy crawfish things. You can probably like put these on like a Texas rig maybe. Just work them across the bottom. Trailers, ribbon tails, trailers, ribbon tails, Sankos. I need to put all those back. That's a big mess. I'm smart and I turned on my light. But now, moving on to the tackle box. Actually, I'm going to review, review, English is tough, my fly boxes. Because those are going to be shorter than the tackle box thing, because that's going to be long. So I got this box. These are a bunch of cheap flies I ordered off of Amazon. There's a bunch of dry flies. Those are dry flies right there. Um, there's some weighted flies right there. I don't really know that much about, um, fly fishing, because there's also no rivers around me. There's pretty much just ponds around me, and lakes. What are, like, the ones with, like, well, I thought there was someone behind me. It's my dog. There's, like, little weights on them. I don't know what they're called. Let me just pull it out. Any of you fly experts know what that is? Comment down below. I don't know, I just ordered a bunch of them off of Amazon. Then I have this box, it's pretty much empty. I tried to make some home. I tried to make some homemade flies. That's one. Right right there. Um yeah, there. That's this is a nicer box. I should probably move the che the um other flies into here. Um, but so those are my fly boxes. Now time to move on to the tackle boxes. We're gonna start off with my smaller boxes. Um, here is just this random box. I keep thinking there's someone behind me. Kind of creepy. And I'm home alone, so that's wonderful. I have this box filled with just random stuff. Most of it's just trash. But, um, next I got this jig box filled with a bunch of crappie jigs. 
right there. That just folds up like that. And I have a few just empty boxes back there. And we'll go with these boxes. Kindle Grey boxes. I, I, I wonder if Kindle Grey is watching this right now. That'd be kind of cool though. But yeah, I got these KG boxes. They're pretty nice because they're sealed. But this is my like catfish and cart box. Just like that. Like whenever I'm going on a fishing trip and can't bring my big tackle boxes, I just bring this small tackle box. Or this small tackle box. This one's for bass. I have some crankbaits, um, some hooks, some spoons, jerk baits, weights, um, swim baits jigs not like crappie jigs like bass jigs and stuff like that um there's a spinner bait that's pretty much it <laughs> difficulty Oh, dang it, I broke, oh wait, no, I didn't. I just need to snap that thing back in place. It's also another Kindle Grey box. Those are my only Kindle Grey box that I have. Um, then I have this tackle box that I bring to the creek. There's like a creek behind, not behind my house, it's by my friend's house. My friend lives like a block down that way. So, we go down there sometimes. There's some bass there and some green sunfish and blue and stuff like that. So I have this box. There's actually some pretty nice bass on there. There's one like six pounder down there. It's massive. It lives inside. It lives inside this swimming hole that we have. I like to go swimming down there. It's probably not very sand safe because um first off, um it it's pretty much a drain. Just a bunch of um um like the storm drains lead to that. I don't really know if that's like every creek, but I'm pretty. I think that's every creek. But yeah, there's just a bunch of trash down there. So I found a shopping cart down there like last week. Then I have this box with a bunch of random hooks. This is just it's filled with bass hooks, um, weights. There's some like shaky heads, um. Just pretty much all the essential hooks and weights you need for bass fishing but then we got um this smaller box filled with crank baits i have another box filled with hard hard baits which include crank baits it's this box it's just filled i just ran out of space in this box so i have a bunch of different crank baits inside of it I don't want to tip this over because if I spill this, it's going to get stuck on the carpet. And as you know, crankbaits absolutely suck and they get caught in carpet all the time. Life is tough. There. And then I got this box filled with bunch of different bladed baits if you don't know what those are it's like chatter baits um um spinner baits i have a few buzz baits not very many but so that's that oh yeah i also have this cool swim bait it's like it looks like a it has like a bass pattern ish but it has like the shape of a bluegill i don't know I think my dog just got into my trash. Look at that. Pretty nice. It's like ten dollars. I don't really want to lose it. But God dang. They have difficulty closing sometimes. Then I got this box filled with swim baits. Actually I should probably put the nice swim bait I have inside the actual box I use for swim baits. That might be smart. There. If you don't need the hooks, it's a terrible idea. 
Oh, shoot. There. Some of these boxes are just cheap. They like came with this massive tackle bag I bought. So they're kind of cheap. But I have a bunch more swim baits. I got this one I got from a mystery tackle box. This weird bait. I've never seen this before. It's like a bluegill, but it's, it's like hooked like a frog. It like has a frog hook in it. Like, you know, the plastic frogs have in them. And it like floats on the top and it imitates like a dead bait fish. I don't know. I've just never seen those before. I need more swim baits. They're just kind of expensive, so. And I have a top water box. I have this Guggen frog. These. The Guggen frog I got from my mystery tackle box. Mystery tackle box, if you're seeing this, I would like to um have a sponsor. So. My dog is about to, like, jump inside the fish tank. More frog. And another frog. Then, these creature baits. Oh my gosh. Dog, stop doing that. And then I have these. They're, like, connected to each other. And then another one. I forgot what they're called. Another one of those. I think they're called jerk baits. Oh no. And then some ploppers. Got that one. And then a Guggen one for Mr. Tackle Box. Ugh. So that's it in my top water tackle box. Now we got the, my jig box. I've got this white and short shark. I don't know how to say chartreuse. Chartreuse thing. And then I got another like bluegillish pattern. <laughs> um like a blue, purple, and black pattern. Another, it's a football jig, this one. It's, I guess you can consider it a bluegill pattern. Another football jig, bluegill pattern. <laughs> this one's like an actual bluegill pattern. Football jig. That, I don't know what that, I don't know what you would call that pattern. This blue and like dark green jig. And then this jig. Reminds me of LSU. It's like purple and gold. Yeah. And then I have some trailers in it. Just random trailers. <laughs> Next, I have a small salt water box. I have like my actual salt water tackle box. It's in the it's in my garage though. So but I got these bigger like small shark hooks. I normally just fish like off um the beach, but occasionally we'll go like deep sea fishing with like a guide. But they have the hooks on them there. And then I have some jig hooks for like pompano and stuff like that. These and then another jig for pompano these pompano rigs you can like hook shrimp up to them or these salt water things i was showing you guys earlier and those work good a rooster tail if you're like fishing in the rocks and then this thing i don't really know what this is called i'm pretty sure it's salt water but i don't know not 100 percent then circle hook for like cat saltwater cat fishing and then some weights, and then more small hooks for like pompano fishing, or fishing for like the white fish. That's all I got for my tackle boxes. Next we're gonna move on to my fishing rods. So, 
I'll get those. So first, I've got this small little ugly stick ultralight. It's the ugly stick GX2 right there. This is really good for like panfish or sometimes whenever I do bank fishing at like Lake Levon for sand bass, this is really fun to catch sand bass on. It fights so hard and you just have the drag loose so the line won't break because it's only like five pound line on it so it's really fun catching like bigger stuff on that and I have this um lose spinning rod American Hero it's a pretty cheap rod but I'm getting a new spinning rod hopefully I'm asking for it for my birthday but it's just this lose rod it's a pretty nice reel I've had it for a few years now I have this spinner bait tied on Spinner baits look work really good in springtime. And then this is actually my brother's, but he like kind of quit fishing. It's a bait caster. It's an ugly stick elite Shakespeare. Um, the reel's an Abu Garcia. Let's see if we can, the gear ratio is six to six point six to one. Yeah, that's that's a pretty nice reel. It's Revo X. And I have just this, the, like, Robo um, crankbait, lipless crank that, if you have the Mystery Tackle Box, I'm pretty sure they're all, like, the same thing inside of it. You probably got that inside of it. The next, I have, this doesn't have a reel, but it's a deep sea fishing rod. I use it a lot. I, like... I have a deep sea fishing girl, but I kind of broke it, so I need to get another one. But I just still have this rod. It's a pretty, it's pretty cheap. We just bought it in um, Florida too, but it works nice. Then I have this smaller. It's pretty much a crappie rod, but I I have a spinner bait tied onto it, so it, I can use it for bass. But it's kind of cheap rod. It's like I'm pretty sure the reel's like ten dollars. The rod's pretty nice, but the um, reels is pretty cheap. But next is my catfishing rod. It's an ugly stick GX2. Not light, not light. It's a, it's not the light one like this. It's hefty. You can literally see the difference. But I use this for catfish a lot. I need to get a new reel just like my saltwater rod. And then I have my fly fishing rod. It's really old. I normally um, break it down. It it like um, folds like no, most rods at the middle. It's really long. They're like normally, I would say like eight feet maybe. It's it's a nice reel. Shakespeare. Oh no, I just got a comment. Oh no, there it goes. And then I also have. Cane pole, you guys know what those look like. I don't really need to show those to you. And then, that's pretty much it. I also have a few other types of gear. I have a cast net, and that's pretty much it. So that's it for this today. English is tough. That's it for today's video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.